Jenny, did anyone call the hospital? No, Miss Elsie, but Miss Doris phoned twice. She wants you to come upstairs to the party. Should we go to Doris's party, Horace? My last evening in New York? I'd rather spend it here with you. Neil, don't forget, we'll be expecting your letter. All right, Leo, may drop up for a while. Good. Hello, Jenny. Good evening, Mr. Neal. Why, it's Neal. Oh, congratulations. We love the play. Any news? No, not a bit. I was just wandering around like a stray cat, and I thought you wouldn't mind if I dropped in for a while. Why, of course. Oh, Neal, this is Mr. Barker. This is Neal Kennedy, who produced the play we saw tonight. Oh, yes. I'm glad to know you, sir. How do you do? Well, sit down, Neil. I'll have Jenny bring you a drink. Now, there's an idea, Elsie. I haven't had one tonight. Well, we'll fix that. Having Jenny mix a drink for you too, Horace. If you don't mind, Elsie, I think I'd better run over to my room and see if they've been able to get that message through for me. Well, must you go? I think I'd better. I've been trying to get a long distance call through all evening. Well, why don't you call from here? I don't want to bother you folks with my business. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Kennedy. I certainly wish you success with your play. Thanks. If I find that I have to leave in the morning, would it be all right for me to come back for a few minutes tonight? Well, of course. But I hope you won't have to go. So that's Mr. Barker. Yes, that's Mr. Barker. I've been hearing about him. Have you? Where? Jenny, I've called up several times lately, and every time Jenny told me you were out with Mr. Barker. Well, I suppose I was. I'm sorry to have missed you, Neil. How do you think the play went? Oh, I think they loved it. I'm sure it's a hit. Well, if it is, I've got some good news for you. That's what I came to see you about. I've got another play I'm going to do, and there's a swell part in it for you. I'm sorry, Neil. I'm afraid it's too late for me. I'm going to leave the stage. And that means you're going to get married. Good evening, Albert. Good evening, Mr. Nichols. You're quite a stranger, sir. Yeah, good evening, Jenny. Why, it's Jim. Why, Jim, I didn't know you were in town. You know Neil Kennedy. Why, of course. How do you do, Neil? Mr. Nichols. When'd you get back, Jim? Why, today. 
Didn't your maid tell you I phoned this evening? No, she didn't. Why, well, she told me you were at the theatre. Yes, I was. It was the opening of Neil's new play. Oh, really? Good. Well, how'd it go? Well, the jury's still out. I'm waiting for the verdict. <laughs> I see. Well, don't you think that we ought to have a little drink to wish him luck, Jim? Why, indeed I do. <laughs> Although it's strictly against the doctor's orders. They'd be quit smoking altogether. Oh, that's tough, all right. Yes, it is. Especially the smoking. I'll miss that a lot more than I'll ever miss the drinks. Still, I hate to think that this will be my last. Well, I know how you feel. I'm always sorry when it's going to be my last. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's hoping you have a success. Thanks. Cheer up. On my way. Uh, good night, Neil. You going back to the theater? Oh, I'm going home now and kick the ticket brokers off my doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> good night, Neil. Speak to Jenny about not giving you my message. Yes, I know, Jim. I'll speak to her about it. Don't be upset about it. It's quite all right. But how's Norma? Why, she had a slight temperature this morning when I was at the hospital. She caught a little cold. I asked Miss Henderson to call me here about this time to let me know if she was sleeping all right. Oh, thanks so much, Jim, for the fruit and things you sent her. <laughs> Did she like them? She loved them. Well, you go to the theater with Neil tonight? No, Jim, I didn't. I went with... with a man I met just after you left for Washington. Oh, yeah? Well, who is he? Well, his name is Barker. Horace Barker. He's from Detroit. I want to talk to you about him, Jim. Uh, what is it? He wants me to... to marry him. He wants you to? Well, well, what kind of a man is he? I wouldn't know how to explain him, Jim. I think he's splendid. I'm more in love than I ever thought I could be with anyone again. Oh, well, that's all there is to it, Jim. I do love him. I see. Uh, are you going to marry him? I want to. Well, there's nothing else to be said, is there? Jim, I'll never forget how good you've been and all the things you've done for Norma. I haven't done anything for Norma or for you, my dear, but I haven't wanted to. And if, if anything should happen, you should ever need me, I want you to know that I'll do anything I possibly can for you. Well, I think I'll go now. Why, oh, Jim, you look ill. It's all right. I'm just tired. I wonder if you'll have Jenny make me some coffee. It's about the only stimulant left to me. I'll get it. Thanks. Oh, I'm so sorry this had to happen tonight, Jim, when you're not feeling well. Oh, I should have realized, I suppose. It was bound to happen sooner or later. Only sorry that I couldn't marry you myself. You know, nothing would give me greater happiness. In fact, I, I talked to my wife only today. 
I thought she might give me my freedom. Or something had come up that made me think that, well, she might want her freedom. But no. Oh, uh, by the way, there's something here. That... Jenny! Jenny! Yes, Call the doctor! <laughs> Jim! No, no, please don't. I'm all right. Jim, you better lie down for a while. Yes, the coffee's ready, Miss Alfie. Yes, that's all I want. It's nothing serious at all. I've had these attacks before. They don't last very long. You know, if you don't mind, I, I think I will lie down for a few minutes. Yes, do, Jim. Just a minute, Jim. Jenny, will you? Yes, Miss Hello? Oh, yes, Miss Henderson. One moment, please. Thanks. Oh, don't you want some water with those? No, no, thanks. This is you. It's the nurse, Miss Elsie. All right, thank you. I'll be right back, Jim. That's all right, Jenny. All right, Mr. Nichols. Thanks. Hello? Oh, yes. Oh, thanks so much for calling. Oh, is she awake? Yes, of course. Hey, you are, dear. It's your mother. today. I love you so much, Mother. You're coming to see me tomorrow? Could you stay all day? I'm so glad. Nurse woke me because she had to rub me with nasty alcohol. Mother, will you sing something for me? <laughs> Darling, Mother, tomorrow I'm going to wiggle my big toe for you. Good night, Mummy. Good night, darling. Good night. That was normal, Jim. 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 Jenny. Jenny. Yes, Miss Dolphy. Mr. Dickles is ill. He's terribly ill. His heart, I think. Get me the ammonia, quick. Call the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> 
on, Miss Elsie. Come on. Oh, no. What's happened? Oh, Leo, it's Jim. He's... he's dead. In there. It happen. Oh. <laughs> was it? Was it a heart attack? Yes, it, it must have been. I knew that his heart was. Oh, couldn't have been, have been some some mistake. Oh, he can't really be dead. Oh, Elsie, I'm I'm afraid he is. Oh. <laughs> did you did you send for a doctor? I, I just sent Jenny for one. She was going to call him when. I was afraid well, he'd I... call the doctor then, Mr. Bergman. He'd call the police. That is so, isn't it, Leo? They would call the police. Oh, Ben. Oh, Leo, what can I do? It'd be so terrible. Oh, not only for me, but for him, too. And his family. He has a family? Yes. A wife and child. It would be... A rotten mess. He must do something. Dr. Brewer, sanatorial. Oh, yes, Mr. Bergman. Yes, the doctor's in the building. Uh, I'll call him for you. Just one moment, please. Oh, hello, Brewer. Leo Bergman speaking. I want you to do me a favor. A man, a friend of mine, has suddenly been taken ill. I want to bring him around to your place and have him taken care of. Seems to be a heart attack. All right, thanks. I'll bring him right over. He's going to be all right. We'll take him to Dr. Gruel's. He runs an exclusive sanitarium. 
If we make it worth his while, he'll have it appear that Nichols died there. That's an excellent idea, Leo. And uh, Ben, <clears throat> we'll have to have the car waiting for us at the door. Uh, Jenny, go downstairs and find my car. It is parked uh, on the side door, see? See the chauffeur brings it in front of opposite the door, right away, will you? Yes, Mr. Williams. Oh, Jenny, um, have the porter be sure that the side door is open. Just tell him that we want to take somebody out quietly. Too much drinking. And here. here All right, that. Mr. Bergman. Ben. Did I frighten you? Oh, but Horace, I can't see you now. But I've got to leave tomorrow, Elsie. Well, couldn't I see you tomorrow? In the morning? I was afraid we wouldn't have a chance in the morning. I didn't want to go without seeing you. Oh, no, I, I didn't want you to. That's why I wanted to have a talk with you tonight. You know what I want to say, don't you, Elsie? I want you to marry me. Oh, please don't ask me tonight, Horace. Darling. Oh, Horace, I... the whole house? No. <laughs> Good heavens, that man's dead. Oh, yes. Yes, he's dead. Oh, Jim. He's dead. Oh, Jim. Jim. Elsie. Jim. Elsie, come. Get control of yourself. Get control of yourself. Oh. What's going on here? This man, a friend of ours, has just died here in Miss Manning's apartment. He's died here? What are you trying to do? As you see, we are trying to take him away. Take him away? Well, you can't do that. You can't move a dead body without its being investigated. It will be investigated. There'll be an inquest, but at the sanitarium where we're taking him instead of here. All we're trying to do now is to avoid any unpleasant publicity. Oh, Horace, please let them go. But you can't possibly... Oh, let them take him away. Thanks, Albert. Yours. Oh, how's things, Eddie? Very slow. Nothing ever happens here anymore. No, no. That's the worst you get. A drunk once in a while, and always somebody to take him out. Where was he when he died? In there. Elsie, I've got to know. Who was this man? Now, I don't want to know anything except what you tell me. Was he married? Yes. Were you in love with him? Oh, I thought so once. But tonight, I told him that I'd met the man I really loved. Oh, Horace, you must understand. If it hadn't been for Jim and the things he was able to do, Norma might never have lived. I don't know much about you, Elsie, except what you told me. There might be other things.
You have a right to feel that way about it. What seems so strange is that it's not the way I feel about it. It's the way I've always imagined I would feel, but I don't. Of course, it was a shock coming in here and seeing a thing like that and realizing that even that, somehow, well, it hasn't changed me. No matter what's happened, I don't seem to feel any different about you. What I'd rather do than anything in the world is just to take you and Norma and take care of you all your lives. I love you, Elsie. I love you, too. Do you think you'd be happy with me? I know it. I won't leave tomorrow. I'll stay here. We're going to be married. Now, you want to get out of this apartment right away, oh, tonight. Oh, yes, yes. Is Jenny coming back? Yes, any minute now. Well, when Jenny comes in, we'll have her move you into another room for the night. And I want to get in touch with Kent on the phone right away and tell him that I'm not coming tomorrow. Do you want me to stay here until Jenny returns? No, it isn't really necessary. All right, I'll be back. Now, you're going to be happy, aren't you? Happier than I ever hoped. You pack everything I need for tonight, Jenny. Yes, Miss Elsie. But the bellboy will be waiting for you with a key at 5A. I'll be down just as soon as Mr. Barker gets back. All right, Miss Elsie. Is this Miss Manning's apartment? Yes. I would like to see Miss Manning, please. Who is it, please? You tell her, please, that I wish to see her. I am Dr. Gruel. It's all right, Jenny. Come in, Doctor. I'm Miss Manning. Do you want me to go now, Miss Elsie? Yes, please, Jenny. So, you are Miss Manning? Yes, Doctor. Well, I was just returning from the theater when Mr. Bergman and Mr. Ayub brought a man into my sanatorium. Yes. They told me they brought him from your apartment. Yes, Doctor, what is it? Is there any trouble? Trouble? Why, well, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was afraid you'd come because something had gone wrong. No. Everything is all right so far. That is what I came to see you about. Well, do sit down, Doctor. Thank you. Please. So far, as I said, there is nothing for us to worry about. But naturally, there will be. Oh, yes? When Bergman telephoned me, he told me the man was suffering from a heart attack. That is uh, what you told him to tell me, wasn't it? Well, yes. But after they got him to my place, they told me the man was already dead when he telephoned. Yes, he was. Well, even that would have been all right. That would have been easy enough to arrange and would have saved suffering and embarrassment to innocent people. So I was glad to do it as a favor to Leo. Certainly a pardonable favor. But uh, it was something different. Very different. When I found that the man had not died from a heart attack. It wasn't his heart? It wasn't his heart. He died of poison. So, 
Of course, there, there might be trouble. Poison? Why, he couldn't have. Well, he did. His death was caused by a dose of nicotine. Nicotine? An alkaloid derived from tobacco. One of the most deadly poisons known. Why, Doctor, that's impossible. How could he? That is what I came to find out. He did not take it himself, did he? Deliberately? He did not commit suicide? Oh, no, Doctor. I didn't think he did. Then someone gave it to him. Well, what do you mean? Obviously, he was murdered. Well, I don't know what your object is in coming here to tell me such a thing. But I do know this. It's not true. I have enough evidence to make me pretty certain that it is a case of murder. An unusually skillful and subtle murder. A murder that would have probably even never been suspected. If it were not for the fact that I do not smoke. You must be insane. <laughs> do you know that uh, I think I am not insane? The man lying dead over there in my sanatorium did not use tobacco either. Had he been a smoker, the odor would have been about his clothes. There would have been cigars, cigarettes, or traces of them in his pocket. So you see what I meant when I said that the nicotine poisoning might never have been suspected had it not been that I do not smoke. It made it much more easily possible for me to detect the odor of tobacco upon his lips. But that's absurd. In itself, it might not be conclusive evidence, but I found uh, other indications of nicotine poisoning in the uh, contracted uh, pupil of the eye, in the condition of the blood. Of course, these symptoms uh, might have been caused by heart disease. All of the symptoms, that is, except the odor of tobacco. That could only have been caused by nicotine. But you haven't any evidence except the odor of nicotine. There are various kinds of evidence. Symptomatic evidence, which first aroused my suspicion in the case. Chemical evidence, we will soon have that. My assistant is having a specimen analyzed. Post-mortem evidence, well, for that we will have to wait. And uh, circumstantial evidence. Suppose we take up the matter of circumstantial evidence. Sit down, please. Now, he died here in this apartment, didn't he? He took the poison while he was here. You were alone with him, is that right? My maid was here. <laughs> but she had no motive for killing him, did she? Motive? Why, of course not. But you did have a motive. Well, what do you mean? This is uh, what I found in the pocket of his coat. You see, it is a copy of his will. And uh, one of its provisions is a bequest to Miss Elsie Manning. That is you, isn't it? $200,000. I don't know anything about this. He never told me. <laughs> You may be able to make the jury believe that, but there is no use trying it on me. A jury? It's about time we get together on this, Miss Manning. I did not come here to turn you over to the police. I came here to help you. That is, if I 
find it uh, profitable. So that's it. You're only trying to frighten me. I'm going to call the police. The number is spring 33100. Call anyone you like. I thought so. But I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't do it. All right, then you didn't do it. But somebody did. The police will have to find that out. Unless I get paid for my services. $100,000. You I... can raise that on your share of the will. I don't know anything about the will. I don't believe it really can be his will. I will give you a few moments to get your story ready for the police. Had the coffee? Yes. You had coffee with him? No. The telephone rang and I... Doctor. Yes. He did take something else after the coffee. As I left the room, he was taking his medicine. Medicine? That's the medicine he took for his heart. You see, he'd had a severe attack. Why, Doctor, that must be where he got it. The poison, if he was poisoned, as you say. He must have taken an overdose. An overdose of capsules that size? If you want to make that theory plausible, you should have removed some of the capsules from the box. It's a new box. It is full. Only one capsule has been removed. But there could be a mistake. You may be mistaken about the kind of poison. They put strychnine in heart medicine, don't they? I could have been mistaken about the kind of poison. I'm afraid not. It was nicotine, all right. And you probably just bought a bottle of that common insect spray used in gardening. Nicotine in concentrated form. One of the quickest, surest, Deadliest poisons known. Oh, how could you think of such a horrible thing? You don't have to act for me, Elsie. As a matter of fact, I think it was a very clever piece of work. If it was done, I'm not guilty. Oh, please believe me. But even though I'm innocent, if you go to the police and accuse me, you don't know how terrible it'll be for me. I have a daughter. She's ill. If this should happen to me, I... I don't know what would become of her. Save that for the jury, but... I do not think it will save you. Poisoning is not very sympathetic. But I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't do it. All right. I will put these back where they came from. And nothing is to be disturbed until the police come. You know, Miss Manning, you are either a fool or you have something in your head that uh, I know nothing about. But I do not think you have. And I am sure you are not a fool. You probably figure that if you hold out, I will come down in my fee. But I am not coming down.
Hello? Hello? Who are you calling? Mrs. Nichols. Please. I have Dr. Gruel for you, Mrs. Nichols. He says it's very important. Very well. I'll speak to him, Anita. Yes? Yes? Yes, this is Mrs. Nichols. Mrs. Nichols, your husband is very ill. I am the physician in charge. Uh, could you come at once to the Strathmore apartment in 54th Street? Yes, apartment 6E. And Mrs. Nichols, prepare yourself, because it is quite possible that you might not see your husband alive. Why, yes. Yes, I can come in a few minutes. My car is still at the door. Yes, thank you very much, Doctor. Are you going to tell her that I killed him? I am going to tell her that you killed him. Oh, Doctor, you mustn't. You mustn't accuse me of this. If it's only the money, I... That's all it is. But I must have that money within 24 hours. But I haven't got it. Perhaps it is just as well I call Mrs. Nichols. I can get it from her. Without it costing her a cent. It will be the money left you in his will. But my fee, instead of going down, has gone up. I want it all. Oh, all right. Take it all. I don't care. But I didn't kill him. All right, then. You didn't kill him. Nobody killed him. And if this goes through, he, he died of uh, heart disease. Mrs. Nichols was just leaving when I called. She ought to be here in five minutes. Doctor, do I have to see her? Couldn't I go out until she's gone? Perhaps I had better see her alone. What is in there? A small kitchen. And my maid's room beyond. No other entrances besides uh, this one? No. All right, then. You wait in there. I had better go to make sure about the entrances. I think it's better for me to wait here. Very well. I won't be long. Mrs. Nichols? Come in, Mrs. Nichols. You're the doctor that telephoned me? Yes, Mrs. Nichols. You said that my husband was ill. Where is he? He is at my sanitarium on Riverside Drive. Why did you tell me to come here? I think you had better sit down a few minutes. Please. Mrs. Nichols, your husband is dead. Was it his heart? Yes. I'd been expecting it, of course. Sometime. The terrible shock. I am sorry, Mrs. Nichols. Oh, I must go to him. 
Take me to him at once, please, Doctor. I think you had better wait a few minutes, Mrs. Nichols. There are some circumstances connected with his death that I would like to discuss with you. What do you mean? The reason I ask you to come here is because this is where your husband died. What is this place? What was he doing here? This isn't the home of... Elsie Manning. Was she with him when he... when he died? Yes. Where is she now? She is not here at present. Mrs. Nichols? This is where your husband died. So you see, Mrs. Nichols, there is a chance for very unpleasant consequences for everybody concerned. If it became public, if the newspapers got a hold of it, it would be disastrous to Miss Manning. And I don't suppose that you want any such publicity. Naturally. That's why I came here. I thought I could help you. What do you mean? Well, I could certify that your husband's death occurred in my sanatorium. Why, yes, Doctor. Could you do that? Yes, I could do that, but, well, I, I would be placing myself in a very dangerous position. And I cannot afford to take that chance unless I am well paid for taking it. I see. You expect me to pay you? Well, before we go into that, there is something I would like to show you. It's a copy of your husband's will. Where did you get it? I found it during the course of my examination. I want you to read uh, this paragraph, please. Well, uh, the situation is this. Miss Manning is willing to pay me her entire share in the estate for my services in this manner. $200,000. But uh, I must have that money within 24 hours. You see, the certificate of death must be filed by that time. And before it is filed, I must have the money or its equivalent in my hands. Miss Manning has not got it. So what I want you to do is this. I want you to advance the money against the claim Miss Manning has on the estate. Do I make myself clear? Do you 
understand what I mean? It's all been such a shock, I... I really don't know what I ought to do. Well, it should not take you long to decide. You do not want scandal without it costing you a cent. The money you will advance is Miss Manning's. $200,000 is a large sum, Doctor. What is your name? Gruel. Dr. Gruel. It seems so strange to me that you would be willing to pay it. She's an actress, isn't she? Doesn't seem that she should be so terrified at having the story in the newspapers. She has a child, a little girl who is ill. And it is for the sake of the child that she is willing to make this sacrifice. I see. I just want to make it clear, Doctor, that I'm taking no part in this except to advance Miss Manning the money due her when the estate is settled. What use Miss Manning makes of that money is no concern of mine. If she wishes to pay it to you, it's entirely her own affair. But you understand I am to have that money within 24 hours? Yes. I'll see my lawyer in the morning and give him his instructions. Is that satisfactory? Perfectly. Dr. Bruel. It's all right, Miss Manning. Everything is all right. I can't go through with this. I've been so terrified, I haven't realized. If he was murdered... Miss Manning, please. I... I'm not going to help you hide it. What does she mean? Mrs. Nichols, Dr. Gruel says your husband was poisoned, and he accuses me. So that's why she was willing to pay you $200,000. Mrs. Nichols, I don't know whether your husband really died of poison or not. Dr. Gruel says he did. And I believe he really thinks so. And that I killed him. But I didn't. Now I'm going to do everything in my power to help you find the person who murdered him. She did it all right. I can't tell you what it means to me to go through with this. But I know now that it's the only thing I can do. I could never rest. If I thought Jim had been murdered, and I had helped to hide his murderer. Why, if I paid this money to Dr. Gruel, I'd be doing a thing that would stamp me forever as guilty. It's a serious thing, Doctor, to charge a person with murder. It is not my position to charge anyone with murder. All that is necessary for me to do is to report the matter of a suspicious death to the police, which, with uh, your permission, I am going to do. Wait, Doctor. You must be very sure of what you're doing before you do that. You say he was poisoned. What exactly did cause his death? Nicotine. But isn't it possible that your diagnosis might be wrong? But even if it wasn't, what evidence have you that he Miss Manning... He had this evidence. Jim died here. And if he did die of poison, the only thing I can think of, the only possible thing that could have happened, is that there must have been something wrong with his medicine. What medicine? I'll show you. That is what she is counting on for her defense. But it is the most damaging evidence against her. Gone. It's not there. Did you take it? So, you got rid of it, eh? 
I got rid of it. Why, what possible chance had I to get rid of it? And why should I want to get rid of it? It may contain the very evidence I need to prove my innocence. Oh, no, Dr. Gruel. That box was on that table in there when you sent me out of this room. No one's been here but you. And Mrs. Nichols. Was she in that room? Yes, she was. You killed him. How dare you say such a thing? You know it's true. When I couldn't find this box, when Dr. Gruel said that he hadn't taken it, I knew you had it, and I knew why. Why did you take that box, Mrs. Nichols? It belonged to my husband. Why shouldn't I have taken it? She took it because she knew the medicine in it had been poisoned. I took it before I ever dreamed he'd been poisoned. Oh. I took it when I was in there with you, Dr. Gruel. You said it was his heart. And I still think it was. An autopsy will prove that he was poisoned. Dr. Gruel, my husband was under the care of a physician. Of course, you know under those circumstances, if he died of heart failure, which no doubt he did, an autopsy will be unnecessary. Yes, I know. Whoever killed him was probably counting on that. What do you mean? I mean, I am not sure that Miss Manning did it after all. Of course, both of you had the opportunity. I didn't have the opportunity to put poison in his medicine. I never even saw the box before. And how did you know it was his? Well, I, I knew he was in the habit of taking medicine from a box like that, yes. You knew this box. Oh, well, Dr. Gruel, you said that nicotine could be bought quite readily. Yes, in a common spray used in gardening. I never had a garden in my life. But you have. You have a garden in Westchester. I often heard Jim speak of it. And greenhouses. Why, if you... If I had a motive for poisoning him, you had a thousand times stronger one. He left me two hundred thousand dollars. He left you two million. Besides that, he stood in the way of someone you were interested That's in. That's not true. Miss Manning, let me have that box. We will see. Perhaps uh, only one of the capsules was poisoned. The one he took. If she'd only poisoned one of them, she wouldn't have taken the box. However, I will handle these very carefully. There may be fingerprints. <laughs> Whoever did this did not intend that the investigation should reach the fingerprint stage and might have been a little, <laughs> a little careless. Nicotine. And you'd let me die for it. Now I'm going to call the police. Stop her, Dr. Manny. Dr. Gruel, you said you were willing to take a risk for $200,000. I'll pay you much more than that if you'll help me now. You've confessed. No, I've not confessed. There's just one thing in all you said about me that's true. There is someone I want to marry. But if this comes out, it'll ruin all my plans. Everything that makes life possible for me would be gone. That's why I'm willing to pay. Miss Manning, if we go on with this, it will mean humiliation and exposure for you too. Manning, you are not yet clear of suspicion by any means. Why not consider what she says? It seems such a horrible thing that anyone could have killed Jim. But I'd never consider helping to cover it up, even to save myself. But even if I were willing to, even if I'd let this go on as you ask, you know and I know that Dr. Gruel, if you paid him enough, would do anything you wanted him to. 
Then, if the facts of Jim's murder were ever discovered, I could always be accused. Dr. Gruel, no one knows the truth about what happened here tonight, but you and Miss Manning myself. Is that true? No one. If those capsules are destroyed, and we can testify that it was Miss Manning who destroyed them, then if anything ever arises, it will be Miss Manning who will be tried for murder. Why, you couldn't do a thing like that. You do it because you're guilty. I do it to save my life. Miss Manning will accuse you, you know. There will be an investigation. There's nothing that can hurt me in any way. That box. It will be easy enough to destroy the capsules. In that case, Mrs. Nichols will be in a far stronger position. A loyal, dutiful wife. She had no apparent motive for killing her husband. No one will believe that she did. On the other hand, Miss Manning profited by his death. Miss Manning, why don't we settle this? By destroying the capsules and having me report the death as due to natural causes. I can't do it, Dr. Gruel. I'd never have another peaceful moment as long as I live. Is uh, that final? Oh, please, Doctor. Give me a little time. I want to think. Look out, she's trying to get away. What good did that do her? I don't trust her, Doctor. Just a moment, Mrs. Nichols. After all, what can she do? Horace, come quickly. Now, Dr. Gruel, if you try to destroy that box, I have a witness. What is this? Jim didn't die of heart failure. He was poisoned by his medicine. And they are planning to destroy the evidence and accuse me. Just one moment, Miss Manning. That is not entirely correct. Mrs. Nichols had suggested such a plan. That is true. But I had not consented to take part in it. You uh, run the sanatorium where they took the man? I do. You say the man was murdered? I have reasons to believe he was. And uh, that box contains the evidence that he was poisoned? Yes, it does, Horace. Give it to me. On what authority? Dr. Gruel, give me that box. Were you... Were you addressing this man as Dr. Gruel? Why, yes, Leo. Why? This man is not Dr. Gruel. Who are you? What difference does that make, Miss Manning? It might make a lot of difference. Just my luck, when Elsie needed me, I wasn't home. You sure everything's all right, Johnny? Sure, Mr. Deal. But she delayed terribly long coming down to the new apartment. Please, Horace. Don't be a fool. Perhaps you do not fully understand. This is a serious matter. Yeah, what's the idea, Elsie? What's the gag? What are you doing here, Mr. Maitland? Why the trick dialect? Why, do you know this man, Neil? Yes, this is Police Inspector Maitland. What are you trying to do? Well. I guess there's no doubt now as to who did it. Kennedy, the two men on the stair landing, have them come in. Mr. Manning, I hope you'll forgive my professional deception. Dr. Gruel told me of the suspicious death of Mr. Nichols. 
What I did here tonight was merely my way of finding out beyond a question who was guilty of the murder. I was fairly sure, but not positive. There were many strange circumstances, until Mrs. Nichols, hearing my name, made a run for that window. To headquarters. There's a man waiting for her downstairs. Take him along for questioning. Her coat's in that room. Kennedy, for the love of Mike, give me a cigarette. <laughs> I thought for a moment you were going to spoil everything. <laughs> well, no harm done. Of course, Miss Manning, you understand, we'll need you for... Au revoir. Miss Elsie, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Au revoir, Monsieur le Docteur. <laughs> Have you forgotten we're moving tonight, Miss Elsie? Ha, 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 ha.